Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's class. Um, I would want us to continue. Those who are not here will join us later. Um, I hope so. But also, um, in case someone is having connection issues, I think uh, uh, they will be able to access this lecture because I'm recording, I'm, I'm, I'm able to record what we are uh, engaging ourselves in here. Um, so today our focus is going to be on um, just looking at a bit of design principles of distributed web applications look at a case in point which is oracle uh, web logic i am hoping that i can be able to share just a little bit about um a little bit about um our case studies that we are going to be having um just before we finish so that next week um, we will be able to look at that or if time doesn't allow then we can look at that next week um, but also uh, part of the other administrative issues that I need to raise here is talking to your friends to tell them that the class has started um, some of the administrative issues that um, I also need to talk about here is um, is about um, next week next week we will have our cut one, um, which is a multiple choice question, multiple choice cut. Yeah. So it's just um, those, I think all of you have taken you through data mining. And so that is what I mean by multiple choice um, uh, cut, whereby it's, um, it's sort of like you just tick, tick, tick as you go, you match. If you are doing comparison, you um, something like that. But also, we will have um, an essay question. I think it should be like one of them, uh, which is an essay question. Uh, and mainly, um, as you may know by now, is that uh, my cuts are mostly focused on head knowledge. So, your understanding of just what you've been learning. Um, yes, last week I was not here, um, but I, uh, being away, the beauty about uh, this platform is being away does not mean that class doesn't continue. Um, so I was able to record um, just a bit of, um, you know, part of the lecture. Let me say part because I didn't um, complete the whole of it. And uh, I was able to record um, a video recording and I placed it on the dashboard for you to watch as you relate with the lecture that I was um, I was to have with you guys. Now, I saw that this was um, visited by five students, I think was from my end, I'm able to know who accessed what. Um, and so I haven't ticked uh, or rather done the, the attendance uh, yet for last week, um, but I would want to do that. And I will do that based on um, those people that have been able to go through last week's lecture um, in full. That is what is going to inform the attendance for last week. Um, yes, so please note next week we have um, a cut, and uh, but also the reason why this is coming a bit early, I hadn't scheduled it for fourth week, but it's coming a bit early because we want to simulate how uh, or rather to pilot how the final exam for January semester will look like. So that um, you will have a, a bit of an understanding of that, even as you undertake uh, that exam in the subsequent week. 
Yeah, so please note that and uh, prepare um, just multiple choice questions and uh, it's it's a one it's a um, it's a one attempt um, uh, cut. So just once you can only attempt once, and also some of the things to note. For example, the pages will be sequential in nature, so you cannot be able to go to the previous question once you pass. Um, other things to note is. Um, um whatever for example whatever shalom will be uh the questions shalom will be attending to at any given time may not necessarily the, be the question that brian will be attending to and so um so you may not just just to ensure that you focus on your work um but at the end of the day you will be um able to do all the questions and you be graded um, equally. Yeah, so those are just some of the administrative issues that I needed to mention as far as this class is concerned. Yes, and today we continue. Now, um, the concepts I am trying to introduce here are also the con are some of the concepts that we are going to be looking at in the case studies. Um, I have prepared the areas of focus that I want us to focus on. And if I was to highlight some of those areas, um, yes, uh, let me open that. Um, if I was to highlight some of the topics that I expect is, uh, for example, the architecture and philosophy of distributed applications. Um, you know, uh, components of distributed web applications, the anatomy of search engine, which is um, a big thing as far as Google is concerned, distributed file system. Uh, so how are we able to store files within distributed applications? Um, you know, data storage and, and, and coordination services, distributed computational services, um, uh, design challenges and um, in, in distributed applications. Um, yes, uh, naming services, among others. So we will be um, each, um, I would want to work with groups for various reasons. Um, I don't know, I don't know um, if Peter, Peter is not here, but um, I would want to have groups by before, before next week, so that I'm able to allocate each one of you a topic. And uh, probably what we can do is after the cut, then I will elaborate what we need to cover in this case studies. And, um, you know, the guidelines, provide you with the guidelines on how they will be done, and also help you to understand or give you the particular topic that you you'll be covering so if it's distributed uh, file systems um so you can say i am looking at the topic distributed file systems and my focus is going to be on um google file system and look at how they store their data and uh you will actually realize um this couples i don't know if there's anyone here who has been keen on um, on big data and, and big data analytics, I, I actually realized there is a, um, um, a convergence of what we'll be covering here with um, a bit of big data. So you may talk of Hadoop, uh, you may talk of, um, um, uh, you know, um, HBase, HHive, which are some of those storage um, um, architectures that are used um, in in big data, uh, and this is also because of um, the cases, the case studies that we are looking at. Google is big on big data; they are uh, on top of the game. So you would expect that uh, they have applied some of those concepts a lot. Um, yes, but also, um, so so basically the the. The, the 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 case studies are there to help us 
move to the next level. And you will realize that I may actually slow down a bit on um, or now the concepts part, yeah? Because I say it in this class, we are moving from, we are taking this from a conceptual point of view. So we look at design principles, that those are concepts. But also, we just don't look at design principles. We look at them in the light of how they have been applied in a given uh, platform. And last week we were looking at, for example, on some of those fundamental um, issues. Uh, welcome, Peter. Um, and I'll talk to you in a short one. Um, some of the fundamental issues around um, distributed applications, is, you know, some of those characteristics that we need to note. And those are things that we'll be interrogating even as we discuss our case studies in this class. Yes, so um, unless there is any question, then I would want to take some time to go through. Uh, today's lecture may be a bit uh, longer than um, usual. It may take a bit of time, but I'm hoping that um, we will be able to cover what we need to cover. So basically, we are looking at design principles of distributed web applications, and I will just be sampling a few here and there. It's not necessarily everything, um, but I am saying that because uh, some of those concepts is what we're going to major on in the next phase of this class, which is after uh, our cut next week. Uh, so that will be a bit of case analysis, and we will be coming here for discussions um, to engage, discuss, uh, elaborate some few issues here and there, look at a few issues and help one another. Um, yeah, but also I should say actually that um, case analysis and case studies is um, the next way of learning. If, um, if if Brian you are considering to do an MSc, then you can be sure that uh, the focus is going to be on case studies, case analysis, um, rather than lectures. Yeah. So you engaging on looking up a particular at a particular case and analyzing that and bringing out the thoughts that come out of that and also you know challenging challenging the design principles in that case studies or the the concepts you are learning in that in that case study and that's what we want to introduce ourselves to um, in this class and so I have developed a whole guideline on how this case analysis will be done. So I believe it's not going to be very, very hard for us. Um, and then also I have developed for you um, the structure of the case study report that you will generate. Uh, so what do I expect in introduction? What do I expect in the main body, in the conclusion, in the recommendations? How do I want you to format that? And so I will provide you with, with that as well. Um, yeah, so so that 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 is going to form a very very exciting journey. Um, after after uh, I mean in the course of this class. So the two case studies that I have chosen, um, like I said last week, is Google case study and Facebook. I have a copy of each with me. Um, I, I think there should be this case study, the Google case study should be there in one of the distributed systems um, course book um, as a case study, it should be there. But uh, like I said also is that uh, this should not limit you that you should not feel so limited um, that you must use Google or Facebook. It's only that the concepts that we are learning um, around distributed applications have been deployed very well in those two areas. But I actually thought, for example, uh, the Oracle EBS, which is one of the uh, areas that we would want to look at today, 
um, or rather the Oracle, the Oracle Web Logic uh, Server um, is actually a distributed uh, application. And it's, it's, it's very, very, um, it, it's an area that you can explore. There are many resources that are there. So what I'm basically saying is that you should not feel limited to look at um, um, to look at you know only the case studies that I'm providing, but you can look at the topic you are covering, and if you think that topic has been covered better by let's say Amazon or by uh, PayPal or by you know Zoom or any other. Uh, which are uh, um, you know distributed applications out there, then it's still fine for you to consider to use that. And, and all that I will need is for you to just bring out the concepts that uh, we want to learn together as much as you can. So let me let me move on to today's lecture. So we're going to be looking at a bit of design issues that relates to distributed applications, but also I uh, will look at um, the Oracle Web Logic Server architecture. Um, and this is just to give you a typical example of how Web Logic has been used. Um, and the typical one is, is in Oracle, of course. Um, yes, to begin with is, uh, is to probably remind you of um, pre-tire architecture, um, which is um, the concept that is really, really big as far as distributed applications are concerned. So where we have the browser, um, and, and the browser is the one that helps us to be able to, uh, to interact with the client, um, the users of the system, but also we have some business logic and um, that that can be a complex uh, area altogether. And, um, and, and then also now we have the data layer where the database lies and we can be able to communicate um, uh, from, from, from the top to the end, to the bottom. But also um, very important is there are some of the cross-cutting functionalities that we must achieve in each and every level. So if you're talking of security, security is not just for the business logic level um, or for the data level, data logic level, but it's also for, um, for the client. You want to enforce security. And for the client side, that can be something like authentication, which we are looking at today, authorization, which we are also looking at today, um yes so uh, security is key um encryption for example at the database level we usually say in web applications that uh, you don't want to store like if you have a user account a user table a table that is storing the user the users you don't want to store those um that data as plain text you want to encrypt, you want to hash um, um, the data that you're storing. Because if someone is able to penetrate into a web server and get the passwords in plain, as a plain text, they are able to manipulate the users of the system very easily. Um, but also operational, you know, just the opera, op operationalization of the system and the management, mostly management comes at the business logic level, where we can have an admin who is managing how the, the system is being accessed, uh, managing the privileges of the users, and also managing um, the access of the database um, or the data within the database or the data warehouse, whatever you're using. Um, uh, in the back end. Uh, the other thing is also communication, and we'll just be talking a bit about um, that. Just communication um, is also key. And so we are saying there are some of those things that we want, or part of the design principles is 
what is it that needs to cut across all the levels of um, a distributed application? What is it that we desire that this cuts across all the levels and each and every user is able to access? Um, or rather is, 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 is restricted in a way or is, is managed in a way or we provide communication paradigms for each and every user at each level. Um, and that's very, very important. Um, well, welcome, welcome, Ian. Um, so, so some, um, why would we even uh, consider what is the goal as we design robust applications? Some of those are designed in Java, for example, but just robust distributed applications. What are the goals? Um, typically, is we want to minimize complexity because distributed applications can be very, very complex. Um, you know, we talked about concepts like openness, heterogeneity, you know, um, we want to be able to manage complexity that comes with um, distributed applications. And, and we say part of that is um, ensuring that we are presenting this system as a single coherent system to any, any given user, that they are not able to see a lot of implementation details. Remember, in distributed systems, you must have covered the topic on middleware. Yeah? And the basic concept right there is just providing abstraction uh, to the users that we are able to hide to the users, but also to application programmers, that we are able to hide some of the implementation details that come with um, you know, a very complex system. Yeah, and that means that uh, if I'm using PayPal, which is an e-payment um, um, uh, system, I don't even have to think that there is another one million users out there who are using the same. And that doesn't bother me, but I'm just provided with the interface where I can interact, and I'm provided in a way that I can also interact with the other user, uh, specifically the user I want to interact. Um, we need also to separate tasks into different areas of concern. So, so and, and that separation is also part of what we do in user privilege management. So if we want to manage the users, then we want to ensure that we are able to separate the various tasks and the users are only able to see tasks that involve their or require the engagement. Um, high performance of the application is important. So maximize maximize the throughput, which is the you know throughput. We say it's the number of um, processes we are able to execute in a given unit of time. Um, minimize the response time, and um, I mean those are concepts we learn in in Google. Yeah, just asking ourselves, how has Google been able to achieve, um, you know, a point, a zero point something of a second optimization of the response time that whichever, whatever, whenever you actually send uh, a request from um, on the Google search engine, you are able to get the response within um, a fraction of a second. Um, so, and those are also, uh, that is also uh, at the core of it is actually the design considerations that have been put in place. So things to do with caching, things to do with redundancy, things to do with, um, you know, uh, just being able to, to optimize the, the query um, uh, procedures that you're using. Those are concepts that we cannot be able to run away from. Okay. Um, so some of the design considerations that we need to have, one, um, because of the complexity of the system, we desire that we are able to partition the application um, 
especially partitioning the application logically. So using layering of partition, I mean, using layering to partition your application logically in presentation, business, and, and, and data access uh, uh, layers, um, more or less what we call the three-tier architecture. Uh, and this helps you to create maintainable code and allows you to monitor and optimize the performance of each layer separately. But also it helps you even just to be able to, um, to ensure um, the highest level of uptime for the system because when you are working on the data presentation layer, the database can be running. When you are working on the data, data data access layer or data logic layer uh, it doesn't mean the system is down yeah but the system can keep running even at that level uh, the other thing is a clear logic logical separation of, also offers more choices for scaling up your application and of course we expect that we expect that part of our designing consideration is scalability that um whatever resources we are dealing with today we design with an, an understanding that it's just a fraction of what we expect in the future um, so we are able to scale up in future when that is needed um, something i've mentioned as well is the the use of abstraction to implement loose coupling between layers and abstraction here is just a you know, being able to hide the implementation details and uh, and coming up with ways that you can provide each layer with an interaction interface, an interface that the user can use to interact with the system. Um, so, so even if you are talking of the data layer, even that data layer should have a, a GUI, an interactive, data, you know, um, uh, graphical user interface, uh, but also the client side, definitely you expect that you have um, an interactive um, um, graphical user interface. And that helps you that um, if I want to interact with the database, I still don't have to know where the database is. I just need to be provided with a way to visualize what is happening in the database and to access the data and even to enforce some security issues here and there, or to enforce, to provide some privileges to some users. Um, yeah, and not necessarily that I know where that database is stored or where that database is, but all that I'm interacting with is an interface. Um, so also each component or module should, be a sing should have a single responsibility. So uh, the aspects here that we're talking about is the aspects that relate with, um, you know, we have so many users, we have so many components, but at the core of it, they are, they are uh, in one way or the other, they are independent of one another, but they are working as one coherent system. Um, and, and the failure, you, you see even part of what we were discussing last week is that the failure of one component should not in any way affect the functionality of the other component. So each component or module should, be, should have a single responsibility that each component or module is given a specific feature or functionality and this makes your components cohesive helping to optimize the components if a specific feature or functionality changes. Um, the other thing, and um, just, uh, okay, I hope we are still here. Collins, are you there? Collins? Uko? Or you have left? Brian? Okay, Brian, I can see you're typing. Um, Shalom. Okay. Um, okay, awesome, awesome. And uh, I believe I'm clear enough. Uh, so let's continue. 
Um, okay, um, so, so basically that's very important for us to note um, the, the aspects of, of uh, you know, um, the aspects of each component or module having a single responsibility so that you are able to know if this is a communication module, if this is the distributed file system, if this is our, you know, our, uh, um, our admin, um, you know, our maybe server administration dashboard, we are able to separate, segregate each one of those components and work with them as uh, differently. Um, components, a component or an object should not rely on internal details or other components or objects. Um, and the reason is um, if we are saying that for this to work, this other one must work, then we would in a way be limiting. We would, or rather we would be slow, um, lowering the uptime of that system. Um, that we are not able to achieve the highest or we are not able to optimize the performance of the system simply because when one component or object is, is down, then the, the whole system is all integrated. And, and that also explains why we are saying we want all those um, components to have a single responsibility um, so that they are able to, um, to work as independently independently of one another. And that helps in developing an application that is more maintainable and more adaptable. Uh, so you are able to ensure that the, the, the system that is there, if you want to maintain a particular module or a particular component, then that's pretty much easy and you don't have um, issues. There is something that is called Microsoft. Um, I think it's in .NET where we have uh, Teams development and deployment that you can be able to um, you can be able to develop applications in teams and deploy those applications that I am working on the communication uh, module you are working on the database module I, the other person is working on the user interface module the other person is working on the user registration and we can work independently and bring all those modules together to work as one single coherent system. And, and that's that's powerful, especially if we were to think about it from distributed uh, point of view. Also, do not dupl duplicate the functionality within an application. Um, that is to mean there should be only one component providing a specific functionality. And the functionality should not be duplicated in any other component. Um, the duplication of functionality within the application leads to difficult difficulties in change, making changes, uh, but also decrease the clarity and potential inconsistencies uh, are, are expected. Um, so I am not able to know which particular component is, is providing what a particular service and so if we have duplication of functionality within the um, the the application or within the modules that can bring a lot of inconsistencies uh, because even when it comes to troubleshooting the system you are not able to know exactly how do i troubleshoot this system or where is the problem but when we know that this module is dealing with communication if there is a communication um, issue then we know where to troubleshoot and uh, to resolve the issue um, also identify the kinds of components you will need in your application and the best way to do this is to identify patterns that match your scenario and examine the types of components that are used um, by the patterns or the patterns that match your scenario so uh, that's also very important um for you to identify the kind of components that you need for your application and uh you know just know the scenario i have here is a case where someone needs to transact money from this end to this end 
And so you are able to know what kind of components you need for that communication to be effective. Um, uh, the other thing is grouping different types of components into logical layers. I think that I mentioned even as you were starting. Um, uh, you, should also, you should also not mix different types of components in the same logical layer. So if we are talking of the user interface layer, should not contain the business processing components. Uh, yeah, and this is very typical for a three-tier architecture in web applications. Um, the other thing is to determine the determine the type of layering that you would want to enforce, um, and that would be basically: is it that you want the first layer components in layer one cannot call components in layer C, for example? So that if you are in the presentation layer, for example, you can only communicate in a particular with part components in a particular layer, and you cannot be able to access um, the other layer. So uh, a good example is what we are seeing in our development of web applications today, that uh, if you are a typical client side user, all that you interact with is a business logic layer, and you don't have an understanding of the data layer at all. So the, the business logic layer is the one to, um, to, to actually help you communicate with the data layer, if you need to communicate with the data layer. But also uh, there are some of the functionality or some of the, um, some of the, jobs that we want to achieve, we would want to achieve them from the particular layer we are working with. So um, the concepts of, you know, um, of loading a lot of load on the server are coming up. So concepts to do with caching, concepts to do with, um, you know, what we have in JavaScript that you are able to query and get a response from just the client side. Um, those are very, very important concepts. Um, also do not overload the functionality of a component. So um, segregating components and giving them enough load is important. Um, um, Okay, I was just trying to, I'm not sure what is, uh, okay, okay, let me, let me try to follow up. I think uh, now the challenge is uh, with this system is when I'm presenting, sometimes I'm not able to, um, okay. Um, I think I may have um, missed on some of the questions and that's what I'm trying to. Uh, let me know if I'm clear. Shalom, am I clear? Oh, okay. Uh, and now, how how is it now? Am I clear now? Oh. Uh... So the, the, for some, I think it's clear for some. So if uh, yours is not clear, you may want to, okay, it's better now. Um, um, my goodness, I hope I was not just here talking to myself. 
I think I missed on uh, checking. Now, when I'm presenting, I open up my presentation slide. So I, I, I am not usually on this platform, um, but I'm scrolling from the presentation and you're seeing it here. That's why I miss out yeah, um, on, on seeing what you're posting. So in case you see you are asking something or something is not working, the best way is maybe to interrupt me via an audio. Um, that is still okay. Um, you can do that. So I just believe that I'm clear now. I hope so. Um, wow, for whatever you may have missed, I think uh, I would suggest, I would suggest that um, you will be able to access the recording of this lecture and so you will be able to catch up um i am not sure if it's my network that has a problem um yes because i jump i'm just using the same same network i usually use um so it's it may be either uh from our side on that end or it may be my network as well but i am not able to establish that let me see the speed of my network this morning um i need to know if i am having the same speed It may be from our end. Yes, yes, the network is okay. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, um, Kanchori, you want to say something? Please go ahead. Kanchori, are you there? If there's something you want to say, you can either type in or uh, or he left. Okay. Okay, let me just continue, but I just hope you'll be able to, you are able to get me better. Um, and, and let me just, um, Yes, say that it's okay for you to interrupt with an audio if something is not working. Um, so that I am not here talking to myself the whole time and uh, you guys are lost. So in case you see you are typing and I'm not uh, responding and it's something that concerns uh, our engagement here and that could maybe make uh, us engage better then please interrupt with audio. Um, and that's okay for me, no problem. Um, also, uh, part of the communication paradigms, and we'll talk about this in, uh, in the case studies we are looking at, is also we need to understand how each component is going to communicate with other, the other ones. Um, so like how 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 does the communication architecture look like for the system 
is very, very important. This requires an understanding of the deployment scenarios your application will need to support, and you need to determine if communication across physical boundaries or process boundaries should be supported. Physical boundaries, because for example, there may need there may be a need for synchronization if you are communicating across physical boundaries. Um, process also, uh, um, there may be a need for, let's say, um, what are the, the security measures that you are putting in the transmission medium um, or the transmission media that you are using. Um, so that's also very, very important to ensure that you have, um, that, that you are able to have um, a smooth communication between each component uh, that you have in the system. Um, naming conventions, uh, we'll talk about naming uh, as one of the topic. I think uh, the name of, or, or rather the topic I have, I have um, picked is naming services in distributed web applications and we'll be learning a bit of that, but it's very important to maintain a consistent naming conventions when you're working with distributed applications. And the reason here is um, it, this is able to provide you a consistent model that makes it easier for team members or for people that are working in that system to evaluate even just troubleshooting or getting to know where the problem is, um, it's made easy um, and also for maintainability that someone is able to know if I need this, then um, I need to follow this particular format of encoding that has been used. Um, also keep the data format consistent with um, a layer or component. So mixing of data formats can be uh, very, very, can bring about complexity within the system. And so that's also very important. I mentioned when we were beginning about authentication and authorization. And um, of course, we must say that this is not just from the client side. Um, it's not just from the client side that we want to think about authentication and authorization. But I think, um, and okay, I know authentication, mostly people think about authentication from the client side, and we think about authorization from the back end. But I think it's not just that. But I think, I think this cuts across the whole system um, that you need to design good authentication strategy. Uh, which is very important for to ensure that there is high level of security and reliability of your application. So failure to design and implement a good... Um... Okay, I note that, I am noting that, uh, Garucho. I think um, this guy is in Maasai land or where is he? Um, where is that place that we don't have network? Anyway, I'll catch up with him after this class to to know um, what's happening. But uh, just before I end this, and uh, maybe for us to engage more on um, on on uh, some some discussion, is uh, what we are saying is authorization and authentication is very, very important. And uh, this helps us to ensure, um, you know, we are able to follow clear guidelines on how someone is authenticated into the system. Some of the methods that, you know, have been used before are not very efficient, if I may say. For example, there are platforms where you go and you are told to identify, you know, street lights, for you to be authenticated as, uh, you know, a human being. And that can be quite cumbersome to the point of someone just giving up because you are trying to look for those street lights and you can't be able to get out of them. And sometimes you fail, you repeat again. It can be quite cumbersome. 
Uh, but there are simpler ways that are coming, you know, two-factor authentication, uh, you know, issues to do with, um, uh, what is this? Um, we, we talk about even just simple calculations that someone can use to, to authenticate is also um, something that you can um, consider. But basically authentication and authorization are key to um, to even just how people are able to interact with the system. Um, and some of those uh, guidelines are right there, which you can check on um, for authorization and for um, authentication. Uh, caching are also is also something else that we may need to um to consider because this improves the performance and responsiveness of your application um however uh, a poorly designed caching strategy can actually degrade the performance and responsiveness of the system it's possible um so you should be able to use caching to optimize uh, reference um to particular data um, but also just the, the response time, um, we can be able to achieve better response time through implementing uh, a caching strategy. And uh, those are also concepts that we want to ask ourselves big questions on how, uh, you know, um, a search engine like Google has been able to implement a caching strategy that works um uh, and part of that is maybe using some recommender systems that can be able to analyze the history of the user and give them bring closer to them what um they are interested in um that's also very important um yeah so those are some of the guidelines there uh the last one is the user experience uh in designing and um yeah and at, at the very end of the day however how however best the functionality of the system would look like at the end of the day to be honest the user experience is very key it matters a lot how i'm able to navigate through the system how i'm able to know where i am where else can i go and what is there where I am is very important. And uh, those are some of the guidelines that we may need to consider. Um, so I just wanted to give you a typical, and this is something that I'll provide. I'm just trying to um, um, to give you a typical um, web, okay, a typical web logic server, and that is, um, uh, one that has been provided by Oracle. Um, yes, I know Oracle has really invested in some of these products. Um, another one that I think they released not very long ago is uh, something I think we call Oracle Service Oriented Architecture or something, um, which is basically to try and provide um someone with an interface where you can be able to interact from a, an admin level you can be able to interact with the users in a distributed application um and 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 that's that's powerful in there uh i was just trying to check um yes i think it's a service oriented it's an oracle service oriented architecture um they have a suit that you, someone can be able to download and just, you know, have a rapid adoption of a cloud-based application um, by an organization. So if you are working with a cloud-based uh, solution, you can be able to, um, to have a way to administer the cloud solution or the, to administer the, um, the services that you are getting from the cloud solution that you are using. Um, and that helps you to, you know, um, to be able to deal with, um, you know, increasing complexity of the system, 
you are able to achieve you know um integration of the functionalities and the services that you are providing but also that you are able to um ultimately of course um achieve increased productivity um for the for the for the system and the reason here is the major reason here is we are going global each and every company is considering how do we scale up to a global market how do we work with the global market not just a regional market and how can we target a global market share um yes and and that's very important and each one of them are actually in, you know pushing towards that direction okay so um so i would want you to go through um the last part of this lecture which is like 10 slides on server oracle um <clears throat> web logic server and then um, i'm posting the like for example design implementation issues that they have thought about is availability high availability how have they been able to achieve that uh, administration so what are the key tasks that a system administrator within an oracle web logic server can be able to do um you know diagnostic framework how can we be able to troubleshoot where there is a problem how can we create collect analyze um, archive access uh, particular data uh, within the system so i would want you to go through just those few slides there and then um, yeah and then let's have discussion around um, these questions i think uh, let me remove that but these questions um in in our in our discussion forum let's have discussion around these questions in our discussion forum let me know if there is any question okay sorry um let me know if there is any question um from your end before we end and um transition to the discussion forum and i'm just trying to post those questions there um so if you have any question you can be typing in as i post the discussion forum questions in lecture three of this class um <clears throat> So uh, in discussion forum, uh, what I would want you to do is pick at least two questions of the ones that are listed there. And um, yeah, give your thoughts. Out of the five, pick at least two and give your thoughts. Oh, OK, OK. Um, Collins has been has left. I think I had set this session for one hour, but I will. Um, yes, let me just end here. Just tell Collins to join the discussion forum, and let's meet in the discussion in the discussion forum um, for now. Even as I tick the attendance from there, 
So for all of us, let's move to the discussion forum. And uh, as you post, I'll be also taking your attendance. Um, once you post your thoughts on at least two of the questions that I have presented there, which are just the, the, the questions that are on the screen right now. Uh, yeah, the, the, the session was set for one hour, so I may have exceeded. Yeah, I have already ex exceeded with 15, uh, 17 minutes. So that's why he's not able to join, but those who are here can still be able to continue. Okay, if there is no any other question, um, so if you are not able to see the questions, they are there in the discussion forum. I have created a topic called review the lecture three review questions and i have posted the questions there um but of course if you need me to post here i can post here on the shared notes and uh yes these are the questions the five of them i have posted them on the shared notes so you can access them there um that's for gaucho Okay, um, so I end the session here. Uh, in case of any question, let's engage in the discussion forum, but also, um, yeah, in case you need also to give me um, a hands up for anything, uh, I am available. I will be interacting with us in on the other end as well. Thank you for your time, and uh, let's meet next week. Please note, um, cut one is scheduled next week. Uh, so we meet then. Thank you.